In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life. Amen. Please be seated. He has the head of a buffalo and three eyes and an array of traditional Himalayan weapons. He tramples on anything that gets in his way, and that includes other gods. He is the deity Vashra Bharava, and he is known as the defeater of death. He breaks the cycle of death and rebirth by scaring away ego and selflessness, thus providing the path to nirvana. No, you didn't rip, miss a reading. I'm going a little bit off script on this one. <laughs> Given Vashra Bharava's core values, I wonder what he would say when thinking about ego and selfishness. I wonder what he would say about televangelists and megachurch pastors. I think I know what Jesus would say. I'm pretty clear on that one. But I get curious about what uh, this Himalayan god would say, what Vashra Bharava would say, not because I plan to nominate him for next year's uh, Golden Halo Award, but, but rather because this, this character who, who wages spiritual warfare of a sorts against ego and self-centeredness and small-mindedness clearly has something to say about the life of the Spirit that, let's be honest, can get lost in a world of, of broadcast spirituality and, and scaled-up mission plans. Let's be honest. I'm looking at some cameras now. We are all in the live stream business right now. And thank God for that because we get to all be a worshiping community, a cathedral that is so much bigger than the space that we're in. And, and we welcome those who are joining us online, that we are all the church together. So there's a great gift in that. But you know, we've spent a whole lot of time and energy on the questions of how do we do this? When COVID happened, how do we, how do we record and then, and then get, the, get it out? How do we go over social media and Facebook? And then how, how, how do we create the best liturgical experience we can for everybody? That's where a lot of our energy is. But if we don't also ask the question, why are we doing it? It's true of everything we do. But if we don't ask that question with real integrity, then we might just end up spreading the same old message that is really us rather than the story and the message of the, the, of the life-giving creator of all, the one who transforms our lives. So let's use this live stream moment, it's a moment of change, to ask what, is, what really drives us in the spiritual journey? As we carry our witness out into the world, whether that's through live stream, whether that's through rallies or marches, uh, whether that's through our worshiping life together or our events, whether it's just having coffee with people that we want to share our stories with and invite them in, why do we do it? What is our reason for, for having those conversations? As Simon Sinek would ask, what is the why that leads us to live the faith that we do. Jesus had a why. Jesus knew what his why was, and, and it wasn't to show off. It wasn't to prove uh, the neat tricks he could do. It was not to build a religion. It certainly was not to build an institution. In the gospel today, we see why Jesus did what he did. In the, that gospel, he does two things that matter. One, he cares for those who are suffering. And two, he commissions and empowers 12 disciples to widely expand this ministry. 
And why does he do it? He does both of those things for the exact same reason. He does them because he looked at the people of God who looked like they were lo- like lost sheep without a shepherd. He knew that they were, they were suffering, that something was missing in their lives, and he had compassion for them. He had compassion. Jesus felt a kind of mutual suffering for those who were lost, for those who were hungry, for those who were craving and in something that was real, craving an encounter with the living God. That's what compassion means. It literally means to suffer with. And to have compassion, it means something that Jesus had compassion, because compassion is a very human emotion. One might say it is our humanity at its very best. Somehow we are able to see a sibling who is going through hard times and while not feel exactly what they're feeling, to have to share in that sense of pain and want to do something to alleviate it. It's, a, it's, so, it's to be driven by a mutual human need, a kind of sharing of experience where two hearts connect. Compassion not only connects us to our siblings, it connects us to the very heart of God. In compassion, it's all bound up together. But compassion is really, it's very much a a, a human one-on-one connection. It, we can feel compassion more widely, but it loses something a little bit a, as it scales up. Yes, we can have strong feelings for those who experience poverty in the abstract. Yes, we, we can have feelings for those who lose their homes in wildfires in, 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 in California. Yes, we, our hearts are moved when we see the terrible pictures and stories for those who are suffering from warfare, those in Ukraine, those, those in Yemen, those all over the world. And we can be moved to action by that, and I, and I do hope that we will. But that still pales in compassion with the kind of pure human-to-human, one-on-one compassion that Jesus had for the people who were right there in front of him. Jesus loved them, and he had compassion for them, but there were just so many of them. And these were just the folks that he could see. These were the ones he knew that they looked that they were lost without a shepherd. And he thought, I want to care for them. I want to heal them. But there are also so many that I cannot see, so many beyond. What what am I to do? As he looked to the crowds at this ocean of need, I'll play with it a little bit. This could have been Jesus' live stream moment. This could be, have been his, his televangelical epiphany when he realized that he needed to figure out a program, some kind of a dogma that he could simply teach to some acolytes who could carry it out and, and simply spread it that way. Everybody has to conform to whatever it is that he's teaching. But that was not what he did. Instead, Jesus went the path of compassion, which is a different sort of growth. Instead, he named 12, 12 more whom he could empower to carry out that full-bodied compassion even further into the world. And as we think about how that spreads, let's take just a moment to think about what that means For us, we who are a part of that same movement out into the world, anyone who who is called to the life of discipleship, anyone who is called to the life of of evangelism, which, which is all of us, by the way, Jesus saw the multitudes and he knew that without loving, compassionate messengers, they would remain lost. The same is true for us. There are so many in our world who, without our willingness to embody Christ's message, will remain lost in a sea of of ego and, and oppression. 
and a deeply inhumane world. If not us, then who? If not you, each and every one of you, then who will carry out this message of embodied love and compassion? Okay, before you sign up for that, though, let me, let me just share with you exactly what it was that, that Jesus authorized them to do. It, it might shock you a little bit. Okay, curiously, Jesus' commissioning of the twelve had very little to do with carrying a message and, and absolutely nothing to do with building a religion. It, it is all about, and, and brace yourselves for this one, it is all about exorcism and raising the dead. Who is ready to do some exorcism this afternoon? Thank you, Richard. All right. We're gonna be, we'll be doing a commissioning ceremony uh, later on for that. It's right there. Jesus sends his, gives his, the disciples authority to be exorcist, and he did it uh, not to be shocking, not because he was into that kind of thing, but he did it precisely because he had compassion for the people who were lost. Those people were suffering because something had taken root right there beside their heart. And it was tearing them up. That thing, whatever it was, was not going to go quietly. Have you ever seen this in your life? We're, we're polite. We don't talk about demons. But, but have you ever seen unclean spirits? Have you ever known someone who suffers with addiction or, or an inability to break free of a cycle of avarice or, or racism or generational trauma? Have you seen something destroy someone you love from within, no matter how hard you try to intervene? As my wife and I recently watched a friend struggle with alcoholism, we, we realized that every single one of us has the capacity to overcome something like that, and yet every single one of us also has the mirror image, the, the vulnerability within ourselves of being completely overwhelmed by it. Every single one of us. The power of sin and greed and self-centeredness, it has so many paths into our hearts. We're, we're once there, can contort our whole being and, and tear us apart from within. And when it does that, it passes itself along from us to others like a virus, destroying our God-given capacity for Compassion. Compassion for ourselves. Compassion for those around us, near and far. Tomorrow is Juneteenth, when we celebrate the day, not, not that slavery was ended, but the day two years later when word finally reached Texas. And we can take this moment to interrogate the slaveholder mindset. What kind of compassion deficit would one person or a whole society have to have in order to enslave another human being? Do you begin to see where our need for exorcism becomes clear? We need God to cast out whatever force has taken root. Not to show, show it who's boss, but be, because God feels compassion for each and every one of us. Suffers with us. Loves us. Whether the victim or the victimizer, God knows how it destroys each and every one of us from within and is here to cast that out from us. Which is why I kind of like Vashna Varava. 
because it tells me that every religion worth its salt actually is going to say a little something about exorcism as well. Because there are things within us that we cannot tackle by ourselves, no matter how well-intentioned we are, and that we need, we need God to move in our lives and to really cast out those places of ego and self-centeredness and hunger for power that destroys us and those we love. But, but you know who says this better? Um, Catherine Meeks, who always says everything better. She says this, When we embark upon the work of healing, there will be help sent from many directions because the Creator and all the soul-keeping forces in the universe, all the soul-keeping universe in the, forces in the universe, are invested in each of us making the journey from birth to death as best we can. The ego is the one entity that has a contrary voice. Can you imagine that? The whole universe, the whole God-created world is on our side, but this one thing has the competing voice, and we give that one the megaphone. Odd, isn't it? And yet we, we do have an answer for it. We do have the ability to practice exorcism. We do have the ability to cast out demons. And you know how we do that? It happens when we practice compassion. Compassion is not just a nice feeling. Compassion is an incredible power to change ourselves and to change the world. Compassion for our siblings who suffer. Compassion for ourselves. So go. Heal the sick. Cast out unclean spirits and raise the dead. Raise the dead. Jesus told us to raise the dead, but so often rather than living up to that goal, we've settled for bringing the best casserole we can to the funeral. Instead, raise the dead. Raising the dead means speaking over and past the unclean spirits, casting them out and letting new life take root. Raise the dead. Raising the dead means sharing, our, sharing in the trials of our siblings, letting them share in ours so that suffering can, that suffering can be transformed into hope. Raise the dead. Raise the dead, because Jesus has commissioned you, each and every one of you, to comfort the lost, to confront the powers, and to instill hope where hope has all but died. Raise the dead, because that's what your compassion empowers you each to do. Amen.